Kimmel Show. Here we go. Mike's hot. Back on the Rockville Show with Kirk Kaplan. Ben Darnell is on vacation. We are at Parkville Market in Hartford. Just off the prospect uh, exit, come find us. And uh, we are going to be hanging out here, watching the rest of uh, USA France here in Olympic soccer. We're down 1 0 here in the second half. and We're actually down 2 0. Oh, my God, we're down 2 0. Thank you, Henry Bienemy. Great throw in right there. I just turned back at the screen. So we're sitting facing into the market. So the huge screen TV is Damn. behind Kurt and I. So we must have missed that. Uh, we also have some Saratoga racing, and the horsies are running, and uh, you can watch that as well. Let's talk a little trade deadline and some of the people that are out there right now that are noteworthy trade candidates that we haven't talked about. This Tariq Skubel, this kid with the Tigers, that he came back from uh, flexor tendon surgery, which is a little bit below Tommy John surgery, he has been unbelievable. He's got the best war of any pitcher coming back from last July. Um, he just made his first all-star appearance. And this dude, uh, he's a leading favorite to win the Cy Young Award in, in the American League right now. And when you're talking about Tigers, whether or not they're going to go to the, the, the postseason, if I'm, if I'm the Yankees, Mets, Dodgers, anybody that, that over the next five years wants to have a talented left-handed guy in the rotation, i got to give up something. I, I, they keep talking about this Jason Dominguez a, as the end all. We're not going to trade this dude. D listen. I I don't care how good of a hitter you are. There's nobody that can re replace great pitching at the major league level right now. Um, Yankees can find some guys to score them enough w runs to win, but you don't have enough arms to win a championship. You don't have enough guys that can go seven innings. Right. Gill right now is one of your best pitchers. You pulled him after five innings because he was at 91 pitches. You didn't even want to, like, give him ten more pitches, uh, you know, put, put him basically at 101 pitches through six innings because you're so paranoid about his health. So when we talk about Crochet from the White Sox uh, and we talk about this Scooble kid, two of the best young lefties that are out there. My thing with Crochet that I love is this guy will bring four seamers at you hard. And he's got the lowest batting average against for any starting pitcher in the major leagues this year against a four-seam fastball, and that includes Paul Skeens. So when you're talking and – and here's the thing. Skeens loves to power pitch, but his two-seam – 98-mile-an-hour uh, fastball or his changeup are his bread and butter. He's not going to challenge a ton of guys with four-seam. To me, four-seam is pinpoint command. Uh, crochet, scooble are going to come right at, at you. And listen, even if I'm the Red Sox and I've got some guys in the minor leagues that I don't think are two, three, two or three years away from getting here, if these guys are available now, I get them because I, A, can control them for the next three, four, five years. Or B, I get them right now, and, and I can possibly trade him in the next year because I'm going to bring up a name right now, a Rosarina. So Randy Rosarina right. was traded four years ago by the Cardinals. Now he's not 25 anymore. He's 29. He's having an off year. So this is something the Oakland A's do all the time, the Marlins do all the time, and the Rays do famously. They flip another guy that they had traded years ago and flipped. Um, so now they're going to flip him because he's – a, a star major leaguer that's having an off year. So well, a, tra a change of laundry can change a lot of guys sometimes. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. I was looking at other teams as you look down the standings, and I'm thinking, like, outside of, you know, New York or whatever, or the Dodgers trying to get the, the Scooble, it, it, I'm – I can't remember the last time that, like, the Braves made a big deal to go get somebody. Because I was thinking, boy, they lost an arm, but they could use one. Well, they did They did go and uh, sign Matt Olson as a free agent when, when they let Freddie Freeman go. So that that was – they didn't trade, but they still went out and they – well, actually, they did trade for Olson. Then they signed him to an extension. Um, but they, they went out and they've gotten a couple of different guys in the last couple of years. But, yeah, I mean, you're right. They haven't traded for – um, that 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 star piece um, in a, in a few years, but well, here's maybe it's because of when they do it. Because it, in a football season, if you do it after the baseball season, so we're in football, you don't make the splash in media as much as you do trade deadline because nothing else is going on. Well, I mean, listen, the the Braves over the years have picked up free agents that have turned into really really good players. Um, one of the guys that came a couple years ago from from the Mets. 
that had bounced around. He was with the Rays, and they signed as a free agent. Um, that, that uh, again, you know, he's not having the kind of year that he had a few years ago, but Travis Darno was a guy that, that you know, the, that helped them win a world championship, um, a guy that handled the pitching really well, and then as he got a little bit older and the DH was instituted, they traded with the A's to get Sean Murphy. And Sean Murphy is now your everyday catcher um, and, a, and a guy that's, that's produced a little bit with the bat. So, you know, when you're looking at making moves, sometimes it's not just the pitching position that you have to improve upon. New York Yankees need a catcher. They yes. keep talking about, hey, I, we need crochet. We need this guy. Dude, you need a catcher. Yeah. And if you don't, if you don't have that guy that, that Who again. Who was the guy last night? I don't even know the guy's name. But, but again, you're, you're bringing these dudes up from the minor leagues and, uh, you know, they're, they're, they don't know anything about the major league hitters. They don't know a whole lot other than maybe Giel, uh if they had him down in the minor leagues. But when you're talking about, you know, all of a sudden starting fresh at this late in the game in uh, end of July, early August, I, I, I need a veteran catcher. I, I got to get a veteran catcher. So I've got to look at some of these other rosters, maybe the backup guy for the Phillies, maybe the backup guy – uh, for the St. Louis Cardinals. I mean, I, I have to start looking around at, at situations where I, I can't entrust that to a young guy. I mean, even Alvarez um, with the Mets to some extent, he's coming off an injury. Um, he's he's uh, definitely one of the better young catchers in the league, but sometimes having a veteran guy talking to you in between innings and you know helping you out in the postseason – is a huge huge luxury that some of these teams can make, and it's not going to cost you a whole lot to get a backup catcher off somebody else's uh, team. Narvaez, that was the catcher from the Yankees last night. But you're, So you're a youngster. You're coming up. You're fresh, and you're on one knee with runners on base, and I, I it, that's driving and, me and crazy. To, to go back to what you said, they did make another trade, the Braves, in spring training. They got Kellenic from the Mariners. They, the, you know, This guy was a young stud that the, the Mariners had kind of fallen out of favor. I, I think you traded him a little bit early. You had control over this guy. Mariners are the worst hitting team in baseball now, you know, and, and maybe he was, he was helping Julio, Julio Rodriguez in the batting. I don't know. I, I'm not there. What I'm saying is sometimes when you subtract somebody from a team, it hurts you. Yeah. This guy, he's actually he's been one of the brighter spots with all the injuries that they've had. Um, Marcelo Suna. Listen, this guy continues to pound the baseball. 28 home runs, 80 RBI, hitting 306 for the Braves. If you didn't have Osuna uh, with, all, with Albies' injury, um, you know, Acuna's injury, you, you'd be dead in the water right now because Austin Riley's having an off year. Um, Matt, Matt Olson's having an off year, 223 with 13 and 44. So th this guy has, has certainly picked up a lot of slack um, where some of these guys have fallen off the pace this year. <laughs> but we got to uh, let's give some updates. Uh, your <laughs> your Boston Red Sox in the fourth are really getting hammered here on Getaway Day, uh, twelve to two. Oh. The Rockies are beating the Boston Red Sox right now. We're all even in the eighth inning between the Brewers and the Cubs at two. Uh, Mariners lead the Angels one to nothing. No surprise there. Astros winning two to one over the a Oakland Athletics. It's a final now uh, in Pittsburgh where uh, the Pittsburgh Pirates have beaten the Cardinals 5 to nothing, We've got some later starting games while we'll be here. Um, 6.05 is the second game of the doubleheader for the Reds-Braves. 6.40 is the Orioles-Marlins start. Um, 6.40 is the Tigers-Guardians. 6.45, Padres-Nationals. And then, again, 7 o'clock is the start with the Subway Series. Listen, uh, Manaya, who's had a decent year, is going up against Cole, who's coming off injury. Um, and he's already 3-1 and one with a 4-6. Hasn't been as sharp as we've seen in the past. I would say I'd give him another five starts before he's the old Garrett Cole, but uh, certainly uh, this is a huge game for the Yankees. They, they can't drop two right here uh, and start off 2-4 and four in, in the second half after the All-Star break. I want to go back to the Orioles for a second, and what do they need? Like, what is the, what is the problem that you would see them in postseason? Because I think... You have that immediately. You're laser focused on the postseason right now. I think the first thing about the Orioles is one of the relievers got hurt, so he's done for the season with Tommy right. John surgery. Um, obviously, you've got a lot of these guys, these, these offensive juggernauts, have to continue to hit. 
I mean, when you win championships, everybody has a career year. Right. That's that's when when I look back at our championship year. Now we didn't have one guy to hit 30 home runs or a guy that won 20 games, but we had a lot of 15 game winners in the rotation. We had a lot of guys with 27, 25, 26 home runs, 80, 90 RBI. So we we had guys doing that. And then we uh, of course we had myself, Norm, and Randy at the back end of the games. Um, you you need that out of these guys. So when when I look at some of these players, uh, Santander. Nobody gives this guy the love he deserves. 27 bombs, 66 driven in. Uh, this guy has been a, a great player for a long time on some bad Oriole teams. Now you look at Gunnar Henderson, who's having an amazing all-star year. 28 and 63, hitting 287. Rushman, can't say enough about what a great catcher he is. But he's also adding with the bat with 1761, hitting around 275. I mean, that, this is the kind of stuff, when I look down their lineup, they're packed. They're packed. And so when, you know, Austin Hayes, who had an amazing year last year, having an off year this year, I mean, you're able to kind of absorb some of some of those failures and hope that he gets hot in August and September. But really, their, their, their rotation is uh, where they've been the strongest, especially with all the injuries that they've had. Corbin Burns was a steal in the offseason. Not a lot of teams were interested in that guy. Started the All-Star game uh, for the American League from the Baltimore Orioles. I think he's the first Oriole to start an All-Star game since Jim Palmer in 1980. Wow. I mean, that just shows you that they've had a lot of lean years. But uh, Rodriguez is 12-4. and four. Uh, You got a lot of other guys that are having really nice seasons uh, earn run average wise. But it, it's it's a, it's a combination of everybody's having a good year. They're well-coached, well-managed. Um, and honestly, from a standpoint, for me as, as selfish, I love the Orioles growing up. They had a lot of really good teams in the 80s and 90s, and then they kind of fell off for a few years. I'm glad to see the Orioles it's now challenging the we AL had that East. that series with the Yankees where the ball was taken out of the Oh, stand. my God. <laughs> what was it, Jeffrey Mayer? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, that was That's awful. a long time ago. So I feel great for their fan base because they've been there. They've They've been through so much. And you're like, finally, you got something to, to give to these guys. All right, before we go, I wanted to bring up, this is the anniversary of George Brett and the, t <laughs> the pine tar incident today, 1983. Um, I, it was my first year in the minor league, so I would have been probably in Billings, Monta Montana at the time or Eugene, Oregon, um, when I got called up. But when you look back, and now I look at how much pine tar are on bats, how many different things are on bats, the way you have axe handle bats, um, baseball technology and the way we make bats. You didn't even have maple bats back then. It was all ash. Um, just the, the fact that someone questioned a go-ahead home run by George Brett against the Yankees, they knew, they knew the information, number one. Number two, they knew if, if he gets thrown out of the game, he's going to go bananas. I don't think anybody thought he'd go that bananas. Um, but number three, the, <laughs> the end of the story is the league president overruled him being ejected. They continued the game, and the Roy Royals got the victory. So ultimately they, they replayed it, or they, they, they finished it the up. game. They yeah. picked it up, and they, they, put, they put the home run back in the game. And the the Royals ended up winning that game. No kidding. But uh, the the I one don't remember all those details. No? Well, the the one thing about it is too is Goose Gossage and George Brett had some of the greatest matchups of all time. I mean, you're talking two Hall of Famers. Um, so back in the day, one guy throwing a hundred, big strong guy, another guy swinging as hard as he can, one of the greatest hitters to ever play the game. Um, always had it, that, was, that. That was the in entertainment value. What value. year was it that Brett was flirting with 400? He did it a couple of years, but there was one year he was real close. I'll we'll have to look that it. up. So we'll take a quick break. We'll come back and we'll do dibbles and bits live from Parkville Market in Hartford. Woo. 